Arithmetic, compound arithmetic, blend calculations, and channel combiner can all be found in the channel category. And I'm covering them all in this video. One, because they are all in that same channel category, but two, because these are actually five effects I've never touched inside of After Effects. I'm not saying they're useless, but they have had no use to me. Plus, let's face it, when you hear arithmetic, you don't really think, hmm, that's an effect I wanna use. But let's start there. So I'm gonna drag that out onto this photo. And what this effect does is allows you to manipulate the pixels of whatever you apply it to using an operator or different mathematical operations on the individual red, green, and blue channels. So if I just change this to something we're familiar with, like add, multiply, and screen, let's just go to screen because that's just like the blend mode screen. Now, if I increase the red, green, and blue channels, it's going to combine those color channel combinations and apply it in the same screen operator that the blending mode gives us. Or I could change this to add or multiply and just change how it's interpreting these values on top of the pixels that are already there. Now, these first three are and, or, and XOR. And honestly, I had no idea what these meant. I had to look it up. And in the Adobe help guide, it says that these are bitwise logical operations. If you're like me, I didn't understand that at all. So I Googled bitwise logical operations and found the Wikipedia article, which was extremely long and full of mathematical equations that I did not understand, but I really don't think you need to. If you do understand them, that's great and you'll understand how this effect works, but I don't really see much of a use for it, at least in a motion design workflow. The only other thing we can do here is change this clipping value from clipping the result values to not clipping them. So those values will wrap around if you uncheck that box. Next, let's look at compound arithmetic. Now this effect actually predates blend modes in After Effects. That's how old of an effect this is. And it's only there to be compatible with the oldest versions of After Effects where projects use this instead of the blend modes down in the layers. And the chances that you'll ever even be able to use a version of After Effects old enough that it doesn't have blend modes are virtually none. So you really don't need to know about this effect. But the way that it works is it allows you to choose a second layer to apply these operators to. And we have a lot of the same operators as the arithmetic effect. So I chose my second layer of this pug and I could change this to overlay and it's gonna blend the two together. It's currently just operating on RGB, but I could change it to RGB plus alpha or just the alpha. All of my pixels are 100% opaque, so it wouldn't really apply to this example. We have overflow behavior, which will allow us to clip, wrap, or scale the pixels as they blend and we can stretch the second source to fit if the two sources are not the same. And then finally, we have the blend with original. So that's compound arithmetic. Now let's take a look at blend. I'll drag that out onto this layer. And this effect is slightly more useful than compound arithmetic. It's not completely obsolete. What it allows you to do is choose a second layer. So again, I'll choose that second image and then blend the two together using one of these five blending modes. So if I change this to say, darken only, and then turn the blend with the original all the way down to 100%, we're gonna see that blending happening between the two layers. And I could change this to any one of these five. And we can also stretch the second layer to fit again if they're not the same size. Now, the only reason I said this is slightly more useful is because this actually allows you to animate between the blending, which is slightly different than just animating the opacity of the layer. But you're limited to lighten, darken, tint, and color. So if you need any other blend modes, you're just out of luck. All right, that's the blend effect. Let's take a look at calculations. Again, this effect combines the channels of one layer with the channels of a second layer. So I'm going to choose my second layer down here. And with this second layer opacity slider, I can fade between the two. Let me just put it around 50%. And up at the top, we have the ability to choose an input channel. So it's currently pulling red, green, blue, and alpha, but I could say just pull the red channel. And then it's going to display that channel in a grayscale image. I could invert that channel, change the channel to whatever I want, but I'm gonna leave that unmodified at RGBA. On the second layer channel, however, I'm gonna turn that layer opacity up and change its channel from RGBA to say red, and now we're seeing just the red channel of that second image. If I go to the blending mode down here, I can choose any one of these options, which are exactly the same as the blend modes we have in the layers down here. So let's just say overlay. And now it's blending the red channel only of the second layer using the overlay blend mode on top of the original layer. Again, this is something you could do with other effects and two instances of the layers and the actual blend modes, but this allows you to do it with a single effect. So that's really what I think it was created for. We can also invert that second layer. And just like the other effects, we can stretch the second layer to fit if the layer sizes differ. And then we can preserve the transparency. Again, that doesn't matter on this example because both of my photos are solid pixels but you have that option if you need it. 
All right, that's it for calculations. I'm gonna get rid of that and apply the channel combiner effect. And this effect allows us to work on either one or two layers. So I'm gonna choose the second layer here, enable that checkbox, change the source to my second photo. And then we have this from dropdown menu. And this is where we choose what we want this effect to actually do. And by default, it's set to RGB to HLS, which stands for red, green, blue channels to hue, lightness, and saturation, which is just a different way of determining those color values. And since we're using a second layer, it's producing some really weird results. If I uncheck that, then we're just modifying the original image instead of combining it with a second. So I'm actually gonna uncheck that for now, and then we'll look at the next option, HLS to RGB. So it's gonna take the hue, lightness, and saturation values of all the pixels and convert them to red, green, and blue channels or red, green, blue to YUV, YUV to RGB, and straight to pre-multiplied, which doesn't really have much of an effect here because that has to do more with alpha channels than color channels. Then the rest of this list is pretty familiar. Red, green, blue, alpha, hue, lightness, luminance, saturation, saturation multiplied, and then min RGB and max RGB. And as soon as you jump out of this first category, this two drop-down menu opens up, and this allows us to choose what we want to translate these channels to. Up here, it's already giving us the two, so RGB to HLS, YUV to RGB. But down here, we get to choose one channel, so let's say the blue channel, and I wanna combine that with the saturation of the original image, or I could change that and say apply it to the red channel. So now the blue channel is driving the red channel, or I could change it to lightness, anything you want. You could also invert the result, and finally, we have this checkbox for solid alpha, which I'll need to add some opacity to my layer in order to show this. So I'm gonna add the Venetian blinds effect, add some completeness, maybe make it a little bit wider and feather it out a little bit so that we have some semi-transparent pixels. If I choose solid alpha, it's basically removing all of that transparency, making all of the pixels alpha values one, meaning completely opaque. But that's it for Channel Combiner. Like I said at the beginning, I've never used these effects in any workflow in After Effects, which doesn't mean you shouldn't. I just think that it's very unlikely you'll ever need to. But because I'm a completionist, I can't leave any of these effects out of this series. But that's all you need to know about arithmetic, compound arithmetic, blend, calculations, and channel combiner. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you wanna support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video. 